Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look how the energies of the electron were discovered or calculated based upon the principles used to find the radius and the velocity of the electron around the nucleus. First of all, the, the energy of a particle, in this case the electron, has to be the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the electron in the orbit around the nucleus. The kinetic energy is always going to be one half mv squared presuming that this is non-relativistic, and in the case of the hydrogen atom, it's not relativistic, and the potential energy, which is going to be a negative energy, assuming zero energy, zero potential energy at infinity, and falling down into a potential well, therefore minus ke squared over r. It's actually minus kq1, q2 over r, but of course, since the charge is the electron and the proton, we can replace q by e, the charge of an electron. And we're just talking about the magnitude of the charge. So how do we make sense out of that equation? Well, first of all, what we can do is we can go back to the realization that the centripetal force equals the Coulomb force, and the centripetal force, keeping the electron in orbit, is mv squared over r, and the Coulomb force is ke squared over r. If we now get rid of the r on the left side by, the, by multiplying both sides by r, we end up with this, so that means that mv squared has to be equal to ke squared divided by r. Now let's go ahead and take this, and plug that back into our energy equation right here. So we can see that E is equal to one half times mv squared is now going to be replaced by ke squared divided by r. And from that, we subtract ke squared divided by r. Now here's an interesting observation. Notice that the magnitude of the kinetic energy is exactly one half the magnitude of the potential energy. That's actually exactly the same as we see in satellite motion. If you go back and look at the videos on uh, orbital motion of a satellite around the Earth, we realize that the kinetic energy, at least the magnitude of the kinetic energy of the satellite, is exactly equal to half the potential energy of the satellite. So no different for the electron going around the nucleus of an atom. Now if we combine these two, we can then see that the energy of an electron going around the nucleus of, a, of an atom in a hydrogen atom, that's going to be equal to minus one-half ke squared divided by r. Now, of course, that would be the energy in the innermost uh, energy level, in the innermost orbit, where r is going to be equal to the Bohr radius. So we can say that we can rewrite this as the energy is therefore equal to k or minus ke squared divided by twice the Bohr radius. Now, we realize that for orbits that are further out, for the second orbit and third orbit, when n becomes 2, n becomes 3, we can see that there's a relationship here between the circumference of the orbit and the number of wavelengths the electron must have. One wavelength for the first orbit, two wavelengths for the second, three wavelengths for the third, and so forth. So because of that, we then know that the radius depending upon what energy level we're in, is going to be equal to the integer number n squared times a sub naught. And so we saw that in the previous video where that came from. So that means that this can then be written in terms of the energy at any level n is going to be equal to 1 over n squared times minus ke squared divided by 2 a sub naught. And you can see then that the energy drops off as 1 over n squared as we go orbits further out. Now you may wonder, well, what's this energy equal to? So this would be energy of the first energy level. And so when we plug in numbers, that gives us minus 9 times 10 to the 9th. For the constant k, e is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. We have to square that, divided by 2 times the Bohr radius, which is going to be 53 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. All right, I left out the units to keep things a little cleaner. And let's see what that number is equal to. Now, this, of course, is a standard unit, so the energy is going to be in joules. 9e to the 9th. And so we get a value of about 2.17 or about 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. 
Now, converting that to electron volts, we have to divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 because it's easier to see than electron volts. So divide by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and we get a number that by now may look familiar. It's equal to minus 13.6 electron volts. And, of course, I forgot the minus. So this is, and I forgot the minus here. Can't forget the minus. That's important. Minus 13.6 electron volts. There we go. Because it does fall into a potential well. Now that's for the first energy level. So now you can see that for the second energy level, we divide by 4, which means minus 3.4. For the third energy level, we divide by 9 and so forth. So as the electron moves to further and further orbits, the energy is well, the magnitude of the energy is smaller, but of course the actual energy increases until eventually you can free the electron from the orbit as n becomes a very large number. But that's how we determined the energy level of the innermost orbit of the electron and how we determine the energy of the orbits beyond that. And that's how it's done.